I'm Dwayne Nickel, a Senior Technical Evangelist for Adobe Systems. In this episode of Adobe Developer Connection, we're going to show you how to use the microphone on mobile devices with the Android operating system running. Now, on my screen, I've got a great set of graphics that Paul Tranny, another one of the evangelists, has given me. Okay, let's take a look at the code, shall we? Here is the, the layout of the application. Um, this application is fixed in the vertical mode. Now, inside we've got a button, and the button is the, uh, for the recording. So here are the buttons given to us from our friend Paul. We're going to first cue off the record button, and we're going to add a click event handler for it. Now, I like to take the uh, generated event handlers because they're somewhat cryptically named and I like to give them a name that's more intuitive to me so what I'm going to do is refactor this and we'll call it record audio Now I've got a few errors in the project right now and that's because I've uh, referenced in some of the uh, other functions like play sound, things like S, which is a sound channel. So we should probably add those in and fix this before we do anything else. So the first one I'll add in is the microphone. Now, when you're adding variables for mobile, it probably doesn't necessarily mean uh, you have to always do this, but I find that it's good policy to go with a very short name. People on mo with mobile applications tend to get very uh, picky about how big applications are. So if you can save a couple bytes, it's good. In this case, it doesn't make much difference. Uh, so we're going to call the microphone get microphone. And now by default, uh, we're going to get a, the index, the microphone indexed at minus one. Now this would be the default mic. So there can be one, more than one microphone on a mobile device, or any device for that matter, kind of multiple microphones uh, attached to it. Uh, if you, as a uh, developer, want to get a list of them, you can ask them to enumerate how many microphones there are and then pick one from a list. Uh, for something like a mobile application, chances are there's probably going to be one, which is why I'm going to go with the default one. The second variable will be the uh, recorded bytes, and the recorded bytes are going to be a byte array. And this will be needed to hold it, and then we have to create a sound object, and the sound object will be, better fix that error. Uh, just labeled as S. And then we're going to create a Boolean. And the Boolean is called recording. And this is to know uh, that we can toggle the recording on and off. Now, we're initially going to set it to false, which is what it should be set to anyhow. But I like to be a bit verbose sometimes, which contradicts my earlier statement. So the first thing I'm going to do is test to see if the recording is on. So when somebody fires up this application for the first time, the Boolean will be set up as false. So I know that both buttons will be presented in the initial states. What we're going to do is we're going to set up the logic that detects this uh, recording state and allow certain actions to happen and then basically switch out the graphics that Paul's given us to the ones with the red dots indicating they're active for both playback and record. So to start this, I'm going to have to do the test. And if recording, which is the name of the Boolean, equals false, and then we'll do some logic down here, and then put in an else if. And our other option is that recording equals true. Uh, we can put the logic down at the bottom for this. So first thing I'm going to do is, if the recording is false, is set the recording to equal true. And then there's a button, the recording button, which if we scroll down in the source code, uh, its ID is right here. Uh, we're going to swap the image out of the recording button.
This will be the source property of it. And we're going to set it equal to the graphic in our graphics package, uh, which is the recording button that is highlighted with the, uh, the redness. So it indicates that we're actually recording. I'm going to have to put this in quotation marks, of course. The third thing is work with the microphone. So we're going to set the rate. Now, by default, Flash Player loves the rate of 44 megahertz, so we'll set it at 44. And then we're going to add an event listener. And the type of event listener will be to uh, listen for the sample data event. And we're going to pass the sample data off to a new function, which will be called get mic audio. And this will take care of listening to it. Last thing we have to do is set a create a new instance of the recorded bytes. So recorded bytes equals new byte array. Now we're getting a warning because we haven't generated right now the get mic audio. So I'll just quickly add this in down below. And get mic audio will of course take the event, it's uh, the sample data event. And it returns nothing. I'll fix my indentation. Now this is a great little trick with the source code. I like my source code to be indented properly. Okay, so we'll do something here later. Now if somebody hits this uh, function, the record audio function, and the recording is true, what we have to do is reset the, uh, first remove the event listener, and then we have to reset the uh, graphics to their original source, and we also have to set the boolean back to its original source. So I'm going to call m, which is our microphone, and remove the event listener. And then I'm going to set the uh, recording button's source back to the original one, which is basically in our package. You can see over here in our source, we've got a number of, in our graphics package, we have a number of different uh, assets that Paul's given us. And we just want to go back to the recording button. the recording off button, which is the one that's not lit up. And then our boolean, which is called recording. We're going to set back to false. We've got one last thing to do, and this is to actually do something with the sample data that's coming in. So we're going to take it and simply create a new byte array and then be able to play this byte array back. So here goes. Within the get mic audio, we're passing it the sample data event. So we're going to create a new variable called sample. And the sample, we type to number. And we're going to read from the uh, event the float. Read float will then re it returns number by default. And lastly, we're going to work with our byte array called recorded bytes. And we're going to write the bytes that were taken to it.
We'll just quickly go through the rest uh, of this. We've done a similar uh, circumstance for the uh, playing of the sound, which is triggered off of the uh, other image. So when somebody hits the play button, it triggers play sound, and this will swap out the graphics. And uh, when the channel uh, stops, it will then call uh, stop playback. Uh, this is um, the queued event uh, sound complete, and call to stop playback will then change the graphics back. So let's run this now and see if it works. I have to turn my volume up for this. <clears throat> so first we'll hit this button. The expected behavior will be that it turns red. And it starts recording some audio. And the expected behavior here is when we play this one, it will swap out to the red image and it will play back to us what we just recorded. And it starts recording some audio. Now. The source code for this can be found at this URL. I'm going to add a few little extras into it as well, so I'm going to comment it for you. One of the cool things I always thought would be funny to do is to have this as a mobile application that you could leave on a mobile device when you leave the room and put it on a timer delay so that all of a sudden somebody would hear. And it starts recording some audio. Or something else. So this is Dwayne Nickel for Adobe Developer Connection. Peace, love, and may your code always compile on the first try.